There's a rumor that this game is getting a remaster or a remake, but do we really want that? Saga Frontier 2 is a role-playing video game developed and published by Square for the PlayStation. It is the eighth original game in their Saga series, initially released in Japan in April 1999. An English version was made available in North America in February 2000. The game features an art style unique to the series at the time it was released, utilizing hand-painted watercolor backdrops and characters to give the game a storybook feel. Like other Saga games, gameplay is largely non-linear, giving the play multiple paths to follow in order to complete the game. The game's plot is divided into two separate stories, with the player given the option to control either Gustav XIII, an exiled would-be heir on a quest to reclaim his throne, or William Knight, a young man investigating the death of his parents, with both scenarios eventually intertwining in a larger plot involving the fate of the world. If you're familiar with Square Enix, they've been publishing a lot of JRPG games in series. You may be familiar with the Final Fantasy series, but Red Pro gamers will definitely heard about the Chrono series, Front Mission series, Star Ocean series, Mana series, and this time, we'll talk about one of the Saga series. My love-hate relationship towards Square Enix games are highly affected by the always changing gameplay mechanics, especially on the Saga series. You may experience different gameplay mechanics as well on the other Square Enix's published games, but I personally feel the most annoying and strange ones are within the Saga series. From all of the other Saga series, I've decided to return to the Saga Frontier 2, just for the art style and the music. Also, I'm just so very curious about the story of the two main characters, Gustav and Will. Let me tell you this from the beginning though, this game isn't for everyone. In fact, actually, not every game made for you specifically. So if you think you're not interested in a game from the get-go, the trailers, or the gameplay, maybe you shouldn't pursue it at all. The storyline of the game will be political heavy, mixed with fantasy, and instead of chapters, your gameplay will be in sequences that you decided for yourself, of which you'd want to play first. I really enjoy stories written from cross-generational perspective. It feels like we're experiencing the growth and development of the characters. But in this case, we're not necessarily feel that attachment aside from the main characters. The theme is quite mature, so it's right up my alley. The dialogue is also not so long-winded, over-explaining or annoyingly long. All of this is what kept me going through the end of the game despite of the unusual gameplay and not so easy encounters. The gameplay of the Saga series as a JRPG was never my favorite, but it always intrigued me. In the past, most JRPGs are always trying something new, but you'll still feel the similarities between one game and the other, even if they are published or developed by different companies. If you're expecting the usual mechanics in most JRPGs, like character levels, consistent party members, or even selling your stuff to make space in your inventory, this game is not it. Instead, you will be introduced with a gameplay that is actually not that hard to understand, just not very explained either. So we'll kind of get it while we play long. But Besides all that hurdles about the gameplay mechanics that we must jump over, the game itself, to me, it's very beautiful. The character is also very interesting, it's just too bad that we won't be spending a lot of time with all of them. And I guess that's one of the reasons why there is some sort of new game plus in the game, and a uh, retrieve item mechanics. I can't recommend this game just for anyone. So I'll say this, if you're looking for a series of stories that revolves around politics, 
finding life purpose and growth, this game could be for you. But keep in mind that this is not your usual JRPG in terms of gameplay mechanics, okay? So what do you think about Saga Frontier 2? Have you tried any of the Saga series? Which one is your favorite? Write down your comment below, like and subscribe if you like JRPG or retro games, so I'll know to make more. Thank you for visiting Forian.